Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Tonight News. I'm Joe Borick, and this is going to be a quick video on the New York Yankees DFA and Clint Frazier making him available to every team in the league to potentially get their hands on, who is still a very good young player when it comes to the batting side of things, minus last season where he really fell off a cliff and then went on the 60 day IL for the New York Yankees, but prior to that, he did have two straight 267 hitting seasons, where the talk with Frazier was more, he just can't field, where are we going to put him in the field, but he can swing the stick a little bit, and was very consistent at it, in his way coming up the ranks to the major leagues, so this is a guy, I think became expendable, by the way, if you enjoy the kind of, please subscribe here, um, at Sports Around News as well as Steel Flyers, the old sports network that we do content at down below, on the easy to use subscribe button, or on the easy to use widget at the end. But I think he became expendable, especially more once you found out the Yankees were going to bring in Joey Gallo, who, again, doesn't hit for average, but obviously can hit bombs and can hit RBI potential and be a very good potent RBI guy. And then you also have Luke Voigt in-house, among others, among other prospects that are going to be coming up the pipe that Clint Frazier would have been just blocking on the Yankees to be more of a depth guy and a bench guy at this point when you look at how their roster shakes out. There are other teams, though, like even the end division, they stole Garrett Whitlock from the Yankees last year, made him into one of their best pitchers, the Red Sox. Would they try to take tabs on Clint Frazier? There's been rumors about J.D. Martinez being in the trade market. The Red Sox have other DH options like Bobby Dahlbeck, for example, um, if you bring back Kyle Schwarber, depending on what they do there. And then also, of course, guys coming up the pipes as well for them, like Casas and others. So it will be interesting to see if maybe they try to take a tab on to try to go two for two in two years in a row, stealing guys from the Yankees and fitting them into their roster. Of course, my hometown, Philadelphia Phillies, they can use as much bench depth as they possibly could get. And Clint Frazier could potentially be that. Last year, again, it was abysmal. It wasn't a good year for him. He hit 183 batting average, one, minus 1.4 war, 186, or 186 batting average, excuse me, 183 at bat. But the two years prior, it was 267 average, 267 average. And then he had strikeout issues a little bit in 2019. But he still had 38 RBIs, 12 home runs to 8, and then 26 the following season with less strikeout issues in that following season. So he's a guy, yes, he is good at strikeout. He's a guy you want to get his contact rate up and his barrel rate up. But he's a guy that when we've seen him coming up the ranks, he really hasn't fully gotten a full opportunity yet. A showcase himself, just like I said about how when the Phillies picked up Garrett Stubbs, who actually has hit well in the minors, and I should have talked about that more in the video, he's been a fielding whiz more so, no matter if you put him in the outfield or at the catching position in the majors, but he also hasn't really got a much of an ample chance to be a legit backup catcher rather than just a mix-in piece or a legit backup platoon guy rather than just a mix-in piece to a team down there in Houston, which he might get a chance in Philadelphia. This is kind of Clint Frazier probably would be best served going to a team like the, now they're called the Guardians, the Cleveland Guardians, or somebody that kind of rebuilding, retooling, because then he's going to be able to come in and get the most ample playing time, be able to maybe work his way up from those back-to-back -back 267 average seasons in 140-something and 200-something at bat, and play more of a 300-something or more at bat season, because he's going to get to work into his groove a little bit more, because it's going to be his first full opportunity um, to really just have somebody say, we're going to ride with you and we're going to see what you can do type thing. Well, obviously, rightfully so. The Yankees didn't do that because he didn't necessarily show them a reason to. But also, this guy's still only 27 years old. Hit back-to-back -back years at that South 267. Was one of the more potent minor league hitters. He still has some ability, I think, to really be one of those hitters that you go, oh, wow, this guy really is a late bloomer, and somebody is able to get their hands on and kind of get a steal um, when it comes to the free agency class or the DFA class, whatever you want to call it, the the moves in the offseason. They can get a steal of a move in Clinton Frazier or Clinton Frazier, who is able to come in and be one of those very key potent bench bats, not the best fielder, maybe a guy that can even make his way into being a everyday DH if he can just become a more consistent hitter at this level compared to at the lower levels. I think it would make the most sense for him. Honestly, go to a team like the Guardian or somebody else that is in that more kind of rebuilding facet of things or um, like the Texas Rangers, something like that. 
teams that are going to have opportunity to put him on the field and get him to where he really wants to go. And then, as we've seen in the MLB before, you can always be traded somewhere else as you heighten your value. So, everybody have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been Sports Night News, a quick video on Clinton Frazier getting DFA'd by the Yankees and the possibilities of what could potentially happen with him and how he could become a nice little pickup for somebody that decides to pluck him off of the market. Stay safe, everybody, and have a good weekend. Peace out.